welcome back to the basic concepts of uh, real function theory. In my previous lecture, I have given uh, the properties of uh, convergence of sequence of functions. We dealt with uh, uh, two types of convergences, one is point wise convergence of uh, sequence of functions and also uh, uniform convergence of sequence of functions. And uh, for further in the proof of existence and uniqueness theorem, we deal with a series of real functions. Now, we will discuss a uniform convergence of series of real functions. So, consider the infinite series summation n goes from 1 to infinity u n x. So, an infinite series of real functions of real functions u n s each of which each of which is defined on some real interval say a b now to talk about the convergence of the series we first uh, form a sequence of partial sums of the series. So, consider the sequence of partial sum. So, consider the sequence of of partial sums of the series. call it f 1 is u 1, f 2 is sum of u 1 and u 2 and so on, f n is u 1 plus u 2 plus etcetera plus u n. So, that is summation i goes from 1 to n u i. Now, we define definition so let this be definition 1 the infinite series the infinite series summation u n n goes from 1 to infinity is set to converge uniformly to a function say f on a b if it is a sequence of partial sums of partial sums which we denoted by f n converges 
uniformly to f or the interval a b. Now, to make sure that an infinite series converges uniformly to a function f, we have the following theorem which is known as a Weierstrass m test. So, theorem Weierstrass m test So, let uh, m n be a sequence of positive constants, be a sequence of positive constants such that the series the series of this positive constants m n n goes from 1 to infinity converges to some number. Now, let the series of functions u n n goes from 1 to infinity be a series of functions such that the absolute value of u x is less than or equal to absolute value of u n x is less than or equal to m n for all x in the interval a b and for and for all n is equal to 1, 2, 3 etcetera. Then the conclusion is then Vesha sem test says then the series of functions then the series u n n goes from 1 to infinity converges uniformly on the interval a b. So, each term of the series is bounded by a constant and if uh, the series formed by that constant uh, is a converging convergent series then the series of functions converges uniformly on the interval a b. So, that is a test we will uh, uh, see an example verifying this fact. So, example say example 1. So, consider a series a series that is summation n goes from 1 to infinity sin n x divided by n square and this is uh, defined on the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. So, 
So, now the sequence of numbers the sequence of numbers m n uh, which is 1 by n square the sequence of numbers is convergent. So, we know that summation 1 by n square n goes from 1 to infinity is a convergent series. So, uh, if you consider u n x which is by definition sin n x divided by n square and so therefore, if I take the absolute value of this, this is less than or equal to 1 by n square as sin n x is less than or equal to 1 is bounded by 1 on the interval 0 to 1. And this is also true for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, etcetera. So, therefore, uh, by applying Weistrass M test, M test. with the m n is equal to 1 by n square and m n n goes from 1 to infinity is finite. We conclude that the series of function sin n x divided by n square for n goes from 1 to infinity. The series of function converges uniformly on the given interval 0 1. Now, another uh, important tool which we will be using in the existence and uniqueness theorem is Arcella Ascoli theorem. Arcella Ascoli theorem says that if you have uh, a sequence of functions which are uniformly bounded and equicontinuous, then that sequence has a convergent subsequence. So, let me introduce what is uniformly bounded and equicontinuous sequence. So, uniformly bounded sequence. uniformly bounded sequences and equicontinuous. Uniformly bounded and equicontinuous sequence of functions.
So, my definition is say definition 2 a sequence of functions a sequence of functions say f n defined on an, in, an interval a b is said to be uniformly bounded a sequence of function f n defined on a b is said to be uniformly bounded if there exist if there exist a positive constant a if there exist a constant call it m greater than 0 such that f n of x the absolute value of f n of x is less than or equal to m for all x in the interval a b and for all n is equal to 1 2 3 etcetera. So, there exists a constant m which is independent of n. So, uniformly there is a bound for each of the uh, function in the sequence. Then we say that the sequence of function is uniformly bounded. Uh, an example of this example say 2. So, consider a sequence of function of functions f n defined by say f n x is equal to sin n x f n n is equal to sin n x where x uh, is varying in the interval 0 to 2 pi and n is equal to 1 2 3 etcetera is a sequence of functions. So, as uh, absolute value of f n x which is the absolute value of sin n x which is less than or equal to 1 on the interval 0 2 pi okay, and for all n is equal to 1 2 3. So, we conclude that f n x is equal to sin n x is uniformly bounded. So, this is uniformly bounded. on the given interval 0 to 2 pi. Now, we define uh, what is uh, known as um, equicontinuity of a sequence of function. So, definition say 3 a sequence of functions 
a sequence of functions f n defined on a sequence of function f n defined on an interval a b defined on an interval a b is said to be is said to be equicontinuous. on the interval a b if so a sequence of functions f n defined on an interval a b is said to be equicontinuous on an on the same, uh, same interval a b. So, it is said to be equicontinuous on the interval a b if for every epsilon every epsilon greater than 0 there exist there exist a delta the delta is a function of epsilon for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta that delta depends on epsilon but is uh, independent of of n. So, it does not matter from which function n it is coming. So, independent of n such that the absolute value of f n x minus f n y is less than epsilon whenever absolute value of x minus y is less than delta. See uh, sequence of function f n defined on an interval a b is said to be equicontinuous if uh, for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta. So, we should be able to find a delta which is independent of n does not matter from which uh, n which function f n it is coming. So, such that f n x minus f n y is less than epsilon whenever x minus y is less than this delta. So, the equi continuity is a continuity in the uniform sense for all n. So, note that so note that the number delta is independent of the choice of of the choice of function from the sequence. So, theorem So, known as Arcella Ascoli theorem, so, theorem number 2. So, it states that let f n be a sequence of be a sequence of functions in the set of all continuous functions defined on the interval a b. So, let f n be a sequence of functions in the space c a b c a b is the space of all continuous functions defined on a b 
and if f n the sequence f n is uniformly bounded if the sequence f n is uniformly bounded and equicontinuous on the interval a b then the conclusion of the theorem is then there is a uniformly convergent uniformly convergent subsequence call it f n k for f n. If uh, f n is if uh, f n is a sequence which is uh, which are functions from the space C A B and if, if f n is a uniformly bounded and equicontinuous uh, set of uh, functions on A B then there is a uniformly convergent subsequence f n k for the original sequence f n. So, this uh, result is known as Arcella Ascoli theorem uh, which uh, we will be using for proving the extensions theorem for the initial value problem. For the proof uh, one may refer to any uh, standard book on analysis or uh, it is also given in Codington and uh, Levinson refer Codington and Levinson. Codington and Levinson's book on theory of differential equations. Now, we move on to uh, next um, topic which will be used in proving the uniqueness of solution of initial value problem uh, namely the Lipschitz continuity. So, Lipschitz continuity. So, Lipschitz continuity of uh, functions. So, initially for the sake of simplicity we will uh, uh, define Lipschitz continuity for a uh, one variable function. Okay. So, definition so this is a definition 4 in this lecture a function f from r to r a real valued function from the real uh, the from the domain as a real uh, space is said to be Lipschitz is said to be Lipschitz continuous said to be Lipschitz continuous also is known as f satisfies a Lipschitz condition. Okay, we uh, refer to this notion as Lipschitz continuity. A function f from R to R is said to be Lipschitz continuous on a subset on a subset say D which is a subset of R uh, if so if there exist a 
a constant call it alpha strictly positive such that a function f from r to r is said to be Lipschitz continuous on a subset uh, d of r if there exists a constant alpha greater than 0 such that the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to alpha times x minus y for all x y in the subset of in the subset d of r. So, in this case, so we now uh, call the constant alpha as the Lipschitz constant of f. In fact, uh, if uh, alpha is a number satisfying this inequality, then any number larger than that will also satisfy this inequality. Uh, we take uh, alpha the least upper bound of uh, all such uh, alphas uh, and um, so that, uh, that alpha we call as a Lipschitz constant, the least number which is uh, the smallest number which is satisfying this inequality is known as a Lipschitz constant of f. And if uh, in case in case uh, d is the old real line, so we here, okay, here assume the definition that d is a subset of r, in case uh, d is all real line, uh, then we say that then we say that f is Lipschitz globally. So, then f is uh, globally Lipschitz continuous. Otherwise, otherwise f is locally Lipschitz. So, if uh, the condition is true is satisfied in the all space then the Lipschitz continuity is a global Lipschitz continuity or is if it is restricted to a subset of the real line then it is a local Lipschitz continuity. Now, we take uh, a few examples uh, showing the Lipschitz continuity. So, let us take examples. So, example call it 4. So, consider a function function f from r to r defined by f of x is equal to 2 x plus 3. So, this uh, function f of x is equal to 2 x plus 3 obviously, this function is not a linear function. Uh, we check the Lipschitz continuity of this function f of x minus f of y is uh, 2 x plus 3 minus 2 y plus 3. So, if we take uh, the absolute value. So, this is less than or equal to 2 times or equal to 2 times x minus y. So, this implies that this is true for all x and y in R. So, f x is equal to 
2 x plus 3 is globally Lipschitz, Lipschitz with uh, Lipschitz constant. alpha is given by 2. Now, consider another example. So, example 5. So, define or consider a function, consider a function f from r 2 to r to r defined by f of x is equal to x square. f of x is equal to x square. So, f of x is equal to x square. Now, to check the Lipschitz continuity f of x minus f of y which is equal to x square minus y square which is equal to x plus y into x minus y. So, the absolute value of f of x minus f of y is okay is equal to x plus y into x minus y. Now, this quantity consider this quantity absolute value of x plus y this is not a bounded quantity if x and y are allowed to vary in the end are real line. Okay. So, uh, but if x and y are varying in a bounded set then this modulus absolute value of x plus y is a bounded quantity. So, if x and y are varying in a bounded set say x is less than or equal to a and y is less than or equal to b. Okay. In that case f of x minus f of y is less than or equal to so, so this value x plus y could be alpha times x minus y, where alpha alpha is a bound for x plus y, where x and y are bounded by these two constants. So, therefore, alpha is a finite quantity. So, therefore, f x is equal to x square is locally Lipschitz. So, if uh, this is locally Lipschitz. So, if uh, x and if x and y are varying from if uh, ok. Uh, for example, if x is uh, if f is defined from a set minus minus a to a to r f x is equal to x square then uh, f x is equal to x square is Lipschitz. with 
alpha is equal to 2 a where x can take maximum value up to a and uh, x varies from minus a to a and y is also varying from minus a to a. So, therefore, uh, absolute value of x plus y that can take a maximum uh, up to a plus a that is 2 a. So, therefore, the Lipschitz constant is 2 a. So, therefore, uh, f x is equal to x square is locally Lipschitz on on a domain say D which is set of all x such that x is less than equal to a with Lipschitz constant alpha is equal to 2 a. Now, uh, one can provide sufficient condition to ensure that a function is Lipschitz. See sufficient condition to ensure that a function is Lipschitz sufficient condition to guarantee Lipschitz continuity. So, I state in the form of a theorem. So, theorem 3 suppose that f is a function from d which is a subset of r and mapping to r is differentiable. on D and the supremum of the bound of the derivative when x varies on D is say alpha is a finite quantity. Then the conclusion is then the function f is Lipschitz continuous on D with Lipschitz constant alpha Lipschitz constant alpha. The proof is uh, very uh, simple just by using the mean value theorem by the mean value theorem f of x minus f of y is equal to the derivative of the function evaluated at some point psi times x minus y where psi is a point lies between lies between x and y. So, therefore, this implies that the absolute value of f x minus f y which is less than or equal to soup of f prime psi into x minus y 
and this quantity is our alpha. By hypothesis, this is a uh, this soup exists and is uh, bounded by alpha. So, therefore, uh, this is less than or equal to alpha times x minus y for all x y in the domain d. And if uh, d happens to be the all real line, then the Lipschitz uh, continuity we obtain is a global Lipschitz continuity. So, global Lipschitz continuity can also be given in terms of the bound of the derivative. If the derivative of a function is a slope of a function is bounded globally, then the function is Lipschitz continuous globally. If uh, the slope is or the derivative is bounded on a bounded set, then the function is Lipschitz continuous on that bounded set. And um, we note that the condition in this theorem is just as sufficient. So, we know that so condition in the theorem is just sufficient. but not necessary for Lipschitz continuity. So, that means, we can uh, produce example where a function is Lipschitz continuous at the same time the conditions of the theorem is violated. So, example a 6. So, so, we take a function f x is equal to mod x and f is defined from r to r. So, obviously, f x minus f y is mod x minus mod y. If we take the absolute value f of x minus f of y, which is absolute value of mod x minus mod y. So, it can be shown easily that this is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus y for all x y in R. So, what does it say? So, this implies that f x is equal to mod x is Lipschitz continuous with the Lipschitz constant alpha as 1. However, f does not satisfy the condition of theorem uh, 3, theorem 3 we stated above. The reason is f is not differentiable at 0 to uh, verify the condition stated in the theorem. Uh, if we take another example, so example 7, so consider the function consider the function f x is equal to sin x. And uh, to verify whether this function is Lipschitz or not, f x minus f y, which is sin x minus sin y, 
and if uh, I want to take and I want to show if it is if f is Lipschitz then there exists a constant alpha such that is less than or equal to uh, that constant alpha times uh, absolute value of x minus y. So, how to show this? Uh, it is not that straightforward provided if, if you use some trigonometric uh, identities you may be able to, but if you just uh, apply the theorem 3 the sufficient condition for uh, Lipschitz continuity that ensures that the function f x is equal to sin x is Lipschitz continu continuous. So, how because f prime x is cos x and it is bounded. So, cos x is bounded by 1 for all x. So, therefore, by theorem 3 there is a sufficient condition condition for Lipschitz continuity implies f x is equal to sin x is Lipschitz continuous with the Lipschitz constant alpha is equal to 1. So, it is a very good test uh, uh, if you just recall the function which we considered f x is equal to x square the derivative is 2 x ok f prime x is 2 x and 2 x is not bounded globally, but whenever x is bounded 2 x is bounded. So, f prime x is bounded So, whenever x is bounded. So, in a bounded domain f x is equal to x square is Lipschitz or that is uh, locally Lipschitz. And if you look at uh, the function f x is equal to sin x, f x is equal to sin x is globally Lipschitz f x is equal to x square is not globally Lipschitz ok, but it is locally Lipschitz. So, not globally Lipschitz So, because of this, so this says that is locally Lipschitz. Now, uh, we require this Lipschitz condition for functions of two variables that we will uh, deal with in the next uh, session. So, therefore, in this session uh, we have seen we have uh, analyzed the uniform convergence of a series of functions and by using the Weierstrass M test we can make sure uh, we can test whether a given series of function is, is convergent uniformly or not. And also we have defined what is uh, equicontinuous function and uniformly bounded functions of uh, say a sequence of functions. And uh, finally, we stated the Arzola Ascoli theorem which says that any every uniformly bounded and equicontinuous function defined on a bounded interval a b has a convergent subsequence. We will uh, deal with Lipschitz continuity for uh, functions of uh, uh, two variables in the next session. Okay.